it is now time for Children's Church. They're CFC kids, so we have kids here. And uh, I'm also supposed to direct your attention to the 2022 Year in Review video. great to uh, kind of look back. I don't know about you folks, but as I look back at that, um, it makes me tired. <laughs> you ever do that? I mean, you ever look back at the pictures and think, wow, we did a lot of things happen. You know, I, I, as we uh, did that, I, I, I thought, I saw pictures from being at the other buildings and stuff, and now we're here, and it's like, wow, it just, it just seems like it's been longer than that ago. You know, it feels like we've been here for um, a long time, and it's, it's good. It's, a, it's all good. It's good. How are you doing this morning? Great. Are we awake? Yes. Are we? We're, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I heard some girl, I won't point her out, but didn't go to bed till like, what time was it? <laughs> it's okay, Courtney. I won't say anything. <laughs> but I, I don't. I, and all I know is that there's some people that are going to sleep this afternoon. Anybody going to take a nap this afternoon? How many people stayed up to watch the ball drop or to watch midnight happen or whatever? We watched the football game. Why? Yeah, well, we're not going to talk about football games right now because we're in the house of the Lord and we want to keep it that way. <laughs> 
So let me just uh, let me just get rolling here. And as Psalms 14, uh, 20, Psalm 20 or 19, verse 14 says, "May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord, my Rock and my Redeemer." And that's what we always hope for. And that's what we always pray for when we come to be on the, at the desk. So um, I want to give you, if you've got a note sheet, if you've got one of the notes sheet or the bulletin, get a pen out. Here's what I'd like you to do uh, right now is to um, write on the top of that note paper 2023. May as well get you used to writing 2023 because I know a lot of you at some point in the next week or the next month are going to write 2022. And so get used to write 2023 because welcome, here it is, and uh, we're going into 2023, and um, I'm looking forward to it. I think God, I believe God has some good things in store for us. How many know He has good things for His people, and we're looking forward to that this year? Uh, we had Carol mention some uh, resolu- resolutions and things that people make, and, and so I, I always like to get online and see what the latest are. So from GoSkills.com, here is a top 10 list that they have. Uh, exercise more. Yeah, that's about on everybody's list is exercise more. We've got to do that. And that lasts, you know, uh, maybe 10 days. Yeah, that's good for 10 days. Uh, lose weight. Well, that goes with the exercise more. And, you know, if I were to ask how many people want to make a resolution to lose weight and exercise more, I'm not going to ask that now because I don't want to commit you, but probably maybe a lot of hands up here. Of course, there may be hands that aren't up that should be up. I don't know. <laughs> Number three, get organized. Yeah, you know, get organized. My version of getting organized, if it's been on my desk since May, I just move it off into the trash. And just get, you know, Maybe that's not a good way. Um, learn a new skill or hobby. I think that's great. I think we should all be learning new skills and hobbies. And I think of my dad who had MS. Now, my dad, before he had his MS, he was retiring. He was looking forward to retirement. And, and he loved golf. And loved to mow lawns. So his, his dream job or in retirement was to mow the fairways of golf courses and play go- lots of golf. And which he was getting into, but the MS hit. And how many know that changes things? And so that left him in a nursing home um, without any hobbies. He didn't read. He didn't do things like that. So I want to encourage you. Think about that. Think about picking up. We're, we like to be active. We like to be outside, some of us, and like to do things. And those are great things. But, you know, we also ought to pick up something that we can take into our future when we can't do those other things so we can keep active. Um, live life to the fullest. Amen. If you're a follower of Jesus, you want to live life to the fullest. And the best way to live life to the fullest is know Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. That is the first way and the best way to start living life to the fullest. Uh, six, save more money, spend less money. Yeah, you know what? I don't know if you've noticed, but America is getting back into the, we had the recession and people started saving money after the recession and we've kind of gone back into the spending more money thing, the routine. And yeah, that's a good thing. Save more money, spend less money. Seven, quit smoking or quit a habit you might have. And that's always good. Uh, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Take care of the temple. Take care of your body. Uh, spend more time with family and friends. That's true. That's a, that's a good one. Right? Because I, I've never, I've been with a lot of people who have gone on into eternity and never has anybody said, man, I wish I could work a little bit longer. You know? And I've been with people who have their loved ones around them at those last days, and it's a great thing. And I've been with people who haven't had anybody there. And that's a sad thing. You know, so spend more time with family and friends. That's a, always a good thing. Number nine, travel more. You know, uh, we saw the Alt Millers are in New Zealand. That's cool. That's great. I personally, uh, I want to see more of this country. I think the wise is you went out west this last year, right? And you saw some places you may not have seen before. Are you glad you did that? Yeah. And, and I, I think there's some places that I'd like to see in this country. Um, read more. If you're going to read more, that's a good thing. I think reading, learning, but get in the Word of God, uh, that's reading more is a, is a great thing to do. And there's some, there's some books out there, too, that I read books. 
Um, some of you read books because God has inspired people to write books and help me in my journey, and so that's good. So there are some things. That's, that's America. That may not be you. You may have your own top ten list, and if so, good for you. Good luck with that. Um, the problem, I think, with New Year's resolutions, I believe, is, is that um, they set us up for failure. You ever, you ever feel like, well, about February, I'll like blowing this one, you know? And, just, and they, they really do. And I think the prob, part of it is that we tackle too many things at one time. You know, a top 10 list. I think 10 is too many. I think, we, you know, we, we, too many things at one time to add that to your general daily living in your life, you know? And we become frustrated because we can't handle all these things, and we just flat give up sometimes. Just, blah, just blow it. And one of the problems is there's always tomorrow. I don't know about you, but I can exercise tomorrow. I'll start tomorrow. Anybody ever say that? Tomorrow. A beautiful day tomorrow. I think tomorrow is one of the greatest inventions there ever was. You know? <laughs> you know? Tomorrow. It's a great time. Procrastinator's creed, right? I'll start tomorrow. It's a great day. So I think a better way to live, I believe, is to make changes incrementally in small bites. And, and things that you can grab onto. For example, this past summer, I decided I wanted to exercise more. And I had been exercising, some of you know, I had been exercising, Mike and I and Zeke and Bruce and some other guys had been doing pretty good, and then we kind of fell, fell away. And honestly, I find that getting up early in the morning, working out, that hour, it just frustrates me because I've I, I got to get up so early, got to get going, I have other things, I want to be, be in my word, spend time in the word, and you know, and so I decided to to do exercises, and I decided I'm just going to limit my exercises. I'm just going to limit to push-ups and sit-ups. Pretty simple, right? And I thought, I went to start it, and I thought, well, how many, how many should I start with? <laughs> you know, that's, that's always the question, you know? And so I said, okay, I'm going to start with 10, if I can do 10 push-ups and 10 sit-ups. Now, you might be sitting there thinking, 10, that's not very many. Try it. Just try it, okay? Before you judge me, try it for yourself, okay? <laughs> I did 10. I'm like, oh, man, am I out of shape, you know? <laughs> so so I, I did 10. So I decided, okay, how am I going to get better at this? So I decided to add one. Every day I add one. I do add. So the next day it was 11, 12. Keep going, you know? So you keep going. Keep adding one. And you know what? It is amazing how far you can go by adding one. Not adding 10, not adding five, not adding, just, just one. Let's make it simple, okay? Just give me one more. I think when we have that mindset of I can just do one more, just do one thing, I can get that done, right? But if I say, let's do 10 more, my mind automatically goes to loser, you can't do that, <laughs> you know? Oh, that's too hard, that's too tough. So, so we do that, you know, and then, then I just add things, you know. So I, I take a small bite each day instead of a whole plate full. That helps you be successful, and success breeds success. How many people know that? The more successful you are, the more you want to keep doing it, and the more you want to keep doing it, the better you get, and the better you get, the more successful you are. It just, just keeps going like that. So let's, I do this. So today I want you to think, I want us all to think about your one thing. Your one thing, my one thing, the one thing that needs to change in your life, my life, this year. What is that one thing? The one thing that you go to bed thinking about, deep in the, it may be deep in the mind, thinking, you know what, I, I really, sometimes it pops up at, at weird times, thinking about, I need to, I need to change this. I just got to do this. Or, and you, maybe it's something you haven't told anybody. Maybe, maybe it's something you just go to bed at night and think, man, I just got to, tomorrow morning, I got to, I got to i got to get this one thing. You know, it's not something that we're jointly changing together and work at, but, but something that's specific to you. The goal today is for you to do something about your one thing. The one thing will be different for everybody. My one thing, Sam's one thing, may be totally different, you know. If, but if you and I focus on just the one thing that I need to work on, that change, that you need to work on and change, each of us will have a higher chance of making the change this coming year and, and then if we had a big list and we try to do 10 things all at once, it, it's really hard for those to do. So think about it. You have on your list, if you have the notepad, you, have, you can write down your one thing. And then I want you to write down action steps. I believe we need action steps 
toward, toward the goal to help us move forward. That's what we did to get in this building. We had some action steps planned. Okay, we need to do this and this. This has to happen before that can happen. This has to happen. So we need those action steps to move forward. And maybe some of you have, have to think broadly about your one thing. Well, I got this, this, this. And you write a bunch down and narrow it down. That's fine. However, however you work it is fine. But I want you to get to that one thing. What is it? Your unique one thing in your life that your life needs to change right now. You know, what is it? If you could be Marty McFly and you could get in a DeLorean with a, with a flux, the flux capacitor and you could travel a year ahead to, to 2024, New Year's Day 2024, and you look back like we looked on, those, on, the, on the video, you could solve, see the change. What is that change that you would most want to see different? Please open your Bibles or take your electronic equivalent or take your note sheets out to... Philippians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 3. While you're getting there, um, talking about what you're doing that, I want to hear some suggestions when I'm talking about one thing. Maybe a one thing um, could be breaking a habit. You know what that habit is, whatever that habit might be. It might be tapping your spoon on the coffee cup and driving your spouse nuts or something. I don't know. Uh, it could be setting goals. Maybe one thing is I need to set goals so I can move ahead in this area of my life. It could be, you know, restoring a relationship, a relationship that needs to be restored by extending forgiveness. You know, relationships, they're so, they're so emotional. You, you know you need to do it. There might be somebody you need to restore with. You know you ought to. You know you need to pick up the phone. You know you need to have the lunch. You know you, you, you need to do that. But when it comes down to doing it, there's always something else or someone else or something else that you would rather do because... Honestly, to restore this relationship, it's going to be hard, it's going to be messy, it's going to be difficult. Do you know what I'm saying? We, we all have those at some point in our life, those relationships that need work and need to be restored. Uh, maybe your one thing is finances, and that's on the list for everybody. Maybe it's time to, to get finances in order. I personally feel like there's a recession looming, and, and boy, I want to encourage everybody, get your ducks in a row when it comes to finances, and, and make sure you're set in those things um, your one thing may not be on this list, but I'm pretty sure that if we sat down and we talked about, about life, we talked about what's going on in life, we could figure out a one thing for you that there's something, there's some part of your life that's something you need to do. It's your one thing. So you write down, my one thing is, and write that down. Uh, you may not want to share it with anybody. You may want to share it with somebody for help you be accountable. I don't know. Um, so let's take a look at this text from the Apostle Paul. Philippians, he's, he's talking to the church in Philippi. And um, a church he planted, he says this. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing. Let's stop right there just for a bit. I focus on this one thing. I'm focusing on this one thing. That's what I'm asking you to do this year is focus just on one thing. And when we're focused, we're much more able to get something done, to get something accomplished. Kathy, she has this amazing ability to multitask. I just, she's, yeah, she's on the computer and talking to me at the same time, writing you an email and, and, and also looking at something else. And, I, and I'm going, uh, 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 you know. Me, I, you know, if, if I'm on the computer and she wants to talk to me, I stop what I'm doing. She goes, you don't have to stop what you're doing. I said, oh, yes, I do. <laughs> you know, I have, to, I have to mute gun smoke if she wants to have a conversation. You know, I watch gun smoke it. <laughs> and... And so, you know, I, I, I'm not a multitasker, you know, but she can, she can do it. She's good at it. But I have to focus. I need to focus on what the task is at hand. And yes, for you, there's going to be distractions that come your way as you go after the one thing that you're thinking about, the one thing that you're writing down. There's going to be distractions you're writing down. Uh, it's so imperative that you stay focused on the task. If you're distracted, come back. Come back. Don't make a big deal out of it. Just, just get back. I know, like for me, for my exercises, sit-ups and push-ups, I got a bad cold a few weeks ago. And man, how many know you don't feel like doing anything when you got a bad cold? NyQuil becomes your best friend. DayQuil becomes a good friend, too. You know, you're, you're doing that. And so I didn't exercise. So do I keep moving forward? No, no, I had to go back. I had to go back because I lost all that work that I had done catching up. So I had to go back a few days and... And, and go back and do that. So just get back. If you're distracted, if something pulls you off course, 
work at getting back on course. I mean, in fact, in fact, your first distraction could very well be losing focus on writing down your action steps. You could say, I'm not going to write that. I mean, I'll get to those when I get home, or I'll write my one thing down later. I'm going to tell you, later is not a friend of yours. <laughs> later is not always a good friend. Now is a better time. You need to, if you're going to do something about your one thing, you need to stay focused. Next, Paul says, What's the one thing that he's focused on? He said, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing that's forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. We need to understand that the past is past. So let's get past it. Get that? The past is past, so let's get past it. And here's what Paul's looking, he's looking back over his life, and he's writing. He's writing to the church, and what he's saying is that his past isn't worth taking the time on. His past, he wants to get away from this. How many know that Paul's past was an awful past? He was a, he was a Pharisee of Pharisees, right? He was, he was a, a man who was accomplished, and he was learned, and, and he knew all that, but yet he was also a killer, a murderer of Christians. Got the letters, maybe he didn't do it, do it first hand, throw the first rock. But he held the coats, we know that in the Bible. He held the coats to make sure that the murders got done. So he, he didn't want to go back to that past. He, didn't want, he wanted to stay back, stay away from that past. He's, he's, he said it's not worth it. A lot, of, a lot of you, a lot of people like to live in the past. I'm going to tell you something. It's not worth it. You know? Yeah, there's some, there's some really fuzzy, fuzzy moments, fuzzy warm moments that we live in the past that we really like. But there's nothing you can do about that past. But you have so much more control over your future. And we need to focus on that, on what's ahead of us, how we're moving forward from this. This stuff, these relationships, this thing I did, or that bonehead thing, or whatever, you know, that, that car I bought, and I wish I wouldn't have bought it, or that job I used to have, or that whatever, that, that. Let it go. Let it go. Focus on what's ahead, forgetting the past. And moving a bit, a bit ahead on that. I haven't shared much of my past. When I was young and... Yeah, anyway. So, simply because it doesn't bring glory to God. So why do I want to share something that doesn't bring God any glory? It just doesn't work, you know. Now, the past is good for if we want to learn for educational purposes. Okay? That's good. But just to dwell on that. I'll dwell on the past and stay on those things... Uh, that's not good. Some, some of us, we tend to beat ourselves up for what the things that we did at one time, you know, pre-God, B.C. days before Christ, right? And um, don't beat yourself. It's under the blood. It's under the blood. Let the blood of Jesus take care of it. Um, some people tend to list, live in the used to could era of life. I used to could do that. Yeah, yeah. If I work for Zeke the Wise and roofing, or doing a roof, I used to could roof, but now I have no desire to put a roof on a house. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 the older I get, the less I want to, the less I want to live back there. But it's over. It's done. I can't go back in my past. You can't go back in your past. In fact, the same thing holds true about good things. So there's a lot of good things that happened in my past. We had, we had. Kathy and I, when we were young, we had a Bible study of 200 young people every Monday night and doing things. Those were so cool. But that's not happening anymore. What's happening instead? Now, here, you're cool. You're my cool people. You know? So this is a great thing for me. This is what I live for today. Paul keeps this in line, keeps this line of thinking going through his ministry, throughout his ministry. In fact, 2 Corinthians, he says this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if you're a believer, if you're a follower of Jesus, he is that you, he, she is a new creature. You're new. Amen. Old things have what? Passed away. Behold, new things have come. So put those back there where they belong. Understand, here we go, your first note. That Understand that defeat comes from living in the past. We are defeated when we, are, when we determine to continue living in the past. When I, I used to be this, I used to be that, I used to could do this, I used to was that, I did this, I led that group of people, I was this kind of person in my work where I was this. What are you now? That's over. There's nothing but defeat for that. You can't live yesterday over again. In fact, Peter Marshall says this. He said, 
Never let the past be so dear as to limit the future. When you live in the past for all the things that you've done, it limits your future because you're not making room for the future. Not many things can survive by living in the past, doing what they've always done and not changing and remaining current. Businesses can't survive if they keep the same practices that they've always had for 60, 70 years. You can't do that. You have to get current with what's going on. You know, medicine has to change. It's evolving constantly. Um, if, we had, if penicillin was all we needed to, to make to fix things, pharmaceuticals would not even be around, right? We'd all be making penicillin, give them a shot, and that's it. No, no, there's always things that are developing. Ministry and churches are included in that. We have to change for adapt to culture, but also keeping the gospel message the same. It doesn't change. Just the way we do things changes, maybe. But the old saying that Henry Ford is true. If you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always got. Isn't that right? If you do what you've always done, you're going to get what you've always got. And that, 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 that doesn't change at all. It works for every area of life. Some of you are thinking, well, but Tim, I just can't get past my past. That just haunts me. Paul tells us how he does it. He says, he says forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. We've got to bury those old, some of those old memories. We've, got to, we've just got to bury them and put them away. In Hebrews, it talks about Abraham and Sarah. The writer of Hebrews says this about them. He says, they agreed, Abraham and Sarah agreed, that they were foreigners and nomads here on earth. If you're a follower of Jesus, you are a foreigner here on earth. Obviously, people who say such things are looking forward to a country they can call their own. If they had longed for the country they came from, they could have gone back. But they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. They understood that this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. They understood that we don't belong here. They understood that, that there is a better place. I got that. The older I get, the more I get that. And the more I get that, the more I want that. If the Lord took me home today, I'd be grateful. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not looking to walk out in the middle of U.S. too and do something bonehead, right? Okay. I'm just saying... I know I don't belong here, and I hope you get that. In fact, I'm going to start a series next week called Eternity Minded. It's going to go, it's a long series, because we're going to talk about heaven. We're going to talk about what it means to be looking toward eternity. We're going to talk, there's a lot in the Bible about eternity, and we're going to talk about that stuff. I'm going to talk about that stuff, so you're going to get, get that stuff next, starting next week. But Abraham and Sarah didn't discuss their old life before they encountered the Lord. They were focused on what's ahead. For 2023, you and I need to do the same. We need to get serious about our one thing. One thing. That's all I'm asking you, to get serious about one thing. Even Jesus said the same thing in Luke 9, 20, 20, uh, Luke 9 62. He said, no one putting, after putting his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. He said, don't look back. Keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. This is a race, people, that we're running. We have to get focused on the goal or else you're going to get tripped up. So next, what does Paul say? He says, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. But I focus on this one thing. What is the one thing? Forgetting the past, looking forward to what lies ahead. Then he says, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. He presses on. He's striving for what God has for him, a heavenly prize, not an earthly one. Think about your one thing. Is your one thing something that you can see yourself pressing on to? Pressing into? Is it something that you can see that's worth it? Maybe it's not worth it. Maybe your one thing isn't worthwhile. Maybe your one thing is, is all about earth in this world. Sure, getting finances in order, if that's your one thing this year, I get that. But you know what? If you get your finances in order, you can become a better steward of your finances. And you can also sow into the kingdom more. And when you sow into the kingdom more, the Bible tells it it profits us, profits us 
from what we do here on earth. So that is a getting a heavenly mindset of what I can do here or there. Maybe you're thinking, Tim, what about your one thing? In 1980, the Lord gave me a scripture. Some of you have favorite passages. I've got a, a bunch of favorite passages. I've got, I've got a whole book full of favorite passages. But in 1980, um, God, that's when God really, really jumped me and uh, got a hold of me. And I had been, um, I took Jesus as Savior and Lord as a young kid and stuff, and I went my ways. And then um, God kind of said, time to get serious. And so this passage, anybody here ever have, read a Bible passage, and it just goes, foom, just, just jumps out at you? It's like, wow, I didn't, when did they put that in there? Yeah, right. <laughs> Somebody got into my Bible overnight. I don't know what happened. <laughs> so so th that's what, you know. Um, I did, so I, and I've determined that my one thing this year needs to be, I need to go back to this again, and I need to be reminded over and over about this many times. In fact, I put the address on this on the headstock of an electric guitar when I was pay, playing in a Christian band, uh, just so every time I looked at that, it reminded me of it. I need a trigger like that to remind me of it. And here, here's my one thing. I do not consider my life of any account as dear to myself, why? So that I may finish my course and the ministry which I received from Lord Jesus. What is that? To solemnly testify, to testify solemnly of the gospel of the grace of God. In 1980, I determined my life has to be about telling people about Jesus. My life doesn't matter. The stuff doesn't matter. Yes, it got in the way. Stuff gets in the way sometimes. But what matters most is that I have to tell people about Jesus. That's why being up here, you know, I, 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 I just want to be here and say, people watching, you need Jesus. Amen. You need Jesus. You got a problem? It's Jesus. Get Jesus. You know, there are a lot of people, we can handle God, but we haven't got a clue what to do with Jesus. The one who saved your soul, the one who's, who's freely giving of himself and, and wants to be there for you. So if I'm going to do something about my one thing, I need to keep getting at it and tell people about Jesus. I'm going to keep it in front of me. I'm going to work at staying focused on this course that God's given me, laying aside things and, and even people and stuff that distracts me from this. How many know that there's sometimes you have to lay even people aside? I know people are important. But we have to say, no, this is more important, right? I'm going to work at staying focused on this course. And I'm going to lay aside the past and center in on the present and the future. Because there's no future in my past. Or yours. I'm pressing toward the goal because only then, only then will I have completed what God has called me to do. Until he pulls me from this planet, I'm going to keep pressing toward the goal. So how about you? Are you with me in taking hold in this new year of, of doing something about your one thing? Whatever it is, your one thing. Maybe it's, you've been playing Christian. Maybe you know what playing Christian, you know? We go do the right things, say the right things, be with the right people, but you need to get at it with God and you need to get, he needs to get your heart. Maybe, maybe that's what you've been doing. The good news is that salvation isn't dependent on you or me. Jesus Christ did it on the cross, right? It wasn't, it wasn't about what I can do. It's not about what you can do. Jesus took care of that on the cross. Maybe your one thing is just surrendering to the work of Jesus on the cross and placing him as Lord of your life and allowing the Holy Spirit to grab your heart, to grab your life. You know, I think when we do that, no, 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 I know when we do that, our life changes. We have that one thing becomes way easier. And maybe like Sam said, maybe your one thing needs to be just a deeper relationship with our Savior as we take this journey to glory one day. I want to invite you, um, let me just say this. If you've never said, got serious, got down to business with Jesus, 
Today's the first day of the year. Do that. Do that. If you want help with that, I'll walk with you in that. If you want to go on this journey, it's a journey, I'll, I'll go with you on that. But only you can determine to do that. I can't do it for you. So, I'd like to have, invite you to stand and read this blessing with me. Let's read. I believe in God the Father. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Christian Church. I believe in the communion of believers. I believe in the forgiveness of sins. I believe in the resurrection of the body and everlasting life. I believe. Amen. You can have a seat. Father God, I thank you so much for your mercy, your grace. And I ask, Lord, that um, this year, um, as we go forward, that we, you help us just to, to move on ahead incrementally on this journey, on this road with you, and to stay undistracted and keep pressing in on the things that you have for us, that one thing that you have for us to take care of today, and then maybe another thing as we go on. In Jesus' name, amen.